Hi, my name is Ben Crawford, and I worked with Heratina Mogoshenu to study analog sites in Romania. We wanted to understand what the criteria are for an analog site to qualify as relevant to astrobiology. For this, we did a short literature review and then investigated the presence of potential analog sites in Romania, which can be of interest for the scientific community and for educational purposes. The aim for this research was to produce a preliminary map of locations of interest for studying analog sites in Romania. What makes a site relevant to astrobiology? Among other variables, some of the most important are the presence of extremophiles, the right biomolecules, favorable kinetics, and considering the environment of the celestial body being studied. Extremophiles are microbes that have the ability to live in extreme environments. There are many different types, but the most interesting are haloarchaea or halophilic archaea. They are polyextremophiles capable of handling more than one type of extreme. They can grow with or without oxygen, convert light to energy, survive underground in submarine brine pools, and even above the protective ozone layer. The origin of this life is something to consider since it can shed light on how life formed in that environment from what it had available. A complementary system of minerals, chemicals, and an energy source must be present along with the right kinetic environment. If a system does not have a substantial amount of the biomolecules needed, it will fail because the rate of interactions between molecules will be too small. In an environment, there is something called a kinetic trap, which is where a system is trapped in non-equilibrium due to the influence of chemical pathways preventing each other from being stable. All life on Earth involves a kinetic trap in many different biochemical systems. One great example is adenosine triphosphate, the energy molecule used for many reactions, including dehydration synthesis, to form a peptide bond between amide excuse me, amine and carboxyl groups on amino acids for protein synthesis. Different planets and moons can have drastically different types of environments, so the type of celestial body being studied is important to consider when looking for analog sites. The type of life there could depend on if there's water, if it's high in salinity or other ions, um, the temperature, pressure, kinetics, if there's radiation, and many other factors. Here are some examples of halophilic extremophiles and the different types of extremes they can tolerate, such as uh, extreme temperatures, pressures, radiation, alkalinity and acidity, and many others. Many of Earth's unique extremophiles are found in mountainous or volatile places like the Arctic or volcanic complexes. Mountains usually have places with extreme conditions like hot springs, caves, uh, icy areas, saline lakes, permafrost, deserts, and many more. The main mountain range I'm focused on in this project is the Carpathian Expanse, which stretches along many countries in Eastern Europe and end in a big curve in Romania. Now, there's no defined astrobiology community in Romania yet, However, there are many sites here which could house unique extremophiles relevant to astrobiology. We created this map from sites in Romania that we found having at least one article researching microbes in extreme environments. Many of the sites are along the Carpathian Mountains and vary drastically in extremes. Uh, most of the sites pointed out on this map are, are have volcanic complexes, mineral-rich hot springs, or have karst features, which are a type of landscape where the rock dissolved and formed distinct geographical features like caves and springs. Pointed out on the coast here is Movile Cave, and on the mountains here is the Burka Mud Volcanoes. These are two intriguing sites I'd like to briefly discuss today. Movile Cave is a cave system sealed off from the surface about two and a half million years ago with groundwater rich in hydrogen sulfide, methane, and ammonia with little oxygen. Chemotrophic primary producers thrive here. These are organisms that oxidize the hydrogen sulfide and methane released from hydrothermal vents to make energy. 
eventually invertebrates have evolved to live here that get their nutrients from these organisms. Due to this, they have less carbon and nitrogen in their bodies compared to organisms on the surface. These are the Burka mud volcanoes, which are made by the eruption of mud, gases, and brine from underground reservoirs due to volcanic activity and hydrothermal vents. Um, some, research, some researchers sequenced mud samples found here and found the presence of mostly allophilic taxa. This study also showed that the most abundant taxa were connected to methane and sulfur production, as well as the presence of salt. Um, here is a example of what Halo Archaea looks like under a scanning electron microscope. And although this one was isolated from Egypt, it shows how these organisms can survive in brines since this one was, uh, was isolated from a brine pool. Uh, we concluded that Romania is an interesting place to investigate astrobiology with its sites containing extremophiles, halo archaea, and various extreme environments. It is also a place where we can promote astrobiology and use field trips as great tools for teaching space exploration. Thank you so much for listening. Here's my references if you're interested, and I'll see you in Romania.